it took so long to figure out what it totally felt like when that happened. I kind of pinpointed it. It felt like the tearing of flesh. I remember one time when I was in my addiction, I just remember laying on the sidewalk and crying out to God and just asking him, why, why God, why? I just wanted love. Because not knowing what love was, I accepted sex for love. I knew at that point I had gone so far down to the bottom. You know, I was like, I was done. I was done trying to make things happen in my life. You can be transformed tonight. You can be changed tonight. You can have all of your sins forgiven tonight because Christ died on the cross and shed his blood for you. And he said, if you're not willing to acknowledge me before men, I'll not acknowledge you before my Father, which is in heaven. And I'm going to ask you to get up and do just that now. And since there's all those people down there already, so I'm up here somewhere, because I was one of the first ones down there. Hmm. Yeah. That was the night. From 1989 to um, 1998, I was turning to all the wrong things for, to drown my sorrows out. There was some place in there that I took a really bad turn, and I spent many, many months trying to figure out where did I take the, the worst turn, ending up at the very bottom. I hated myself. Throughout my addiction, I had been in a lot of abusive relationships, and I felt just filthy. I just felt misunderstood. I felt like nobody cared or nobody wanted to protect me. I felt invisible growing up because I was molested when I was three years old. I was raped at 12, and I was just trying to to mask the feelings that I had. You know, I just wanted to be numb. I didn't want to feel. I didn't want to think. I didn't want to care. We were one of those families that went to church for Christmas or for Easter, and nothing in between there. One thing led to another, and after almost 23 years of marriage, my wife walked up to me and said she no longer wanted to be married. And that was the crash of my whole life. I had seen so many other addicts lose their children. A lot of people tell themselves, oh no, I would never do that to my child, but they end up losing their children and I knew that it's very possible that I would hurt this little girl. And I had taken many beatings and one day um, he was throwing me around and I looked over and seen my son standing in the doorway shaking and I flash back to when I was a little girl and watching my mom get beat. And I thought, no, I'm not gonna let my son go through this. I get another DUI, um, so I got two on my record within a four year period. And the second one, I remember crawling out of a uh, Ford Ranger pickup upside down. I stood on Tina Pump Road there on the, on the thing, I looked up in the sky and I, I told God, I was like, I cried out and I said, I give up, um, my life is yours. Whatever the consequences are, it's, uh, it's uh, that's, so be it. You know, I was like, I was done, I was done trying to make things happen in my life. After 47 days of being confined, someone asked me, what are you gonna do when you get out? This was um, taken out of the jail here in Fairbanks. And so I just had marked things that kind of spoke to me out of this book before I even knew about Reformers Unanimous. To be doomed to an alcoholic death or to live on a spiritual basis.
Welcome to Friday Night Reformers Unanimous. We're going to get started. Hey, there's three things that we do every Friday night. What is it, class? Tonight's principle, principle number four, you cannot fight a fleshly appetite by indulging in it. And it wasn't too many Fridays that I began to acknowledge that, that uh, God was dealing with some root problems that raised my awareness that I needed to approach uh, God with an attitude of, I need your help, I need your healing. What happened is my relationship with Jesus Christ was getting very personal, very intimate. And it was totally different than someone's telling you that uh, you take these, do these steps and you'll get better. It was something brand new to me. I have never heard these words spoken to me ever. Who is this person that gives us this freedom? Who is this person? I want to share with everybody that it's possible to find freedom through Jesus because that's the only way. I tried for over 20 years to do it myself without God. God's been good to me. Within the first couple of uh, challenges, I knew the whole thing I had been missing from being saved in 1989 till then was hiding the Word of God in your heart, being able to draw from that, knowing where to go to in hard times. I feel like God chose me. God chose me to be her mom, and God chose me to raise a daughter. I just think that's so amazing that He wanted me, because He came after me. I'm like, why do you want me? I don't understand, but you know, he wants every heart. And I think it's amazing the lengths he'll go through for one heart.